Good everyone, thank you for joining us here for our new hour-long Krem2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Tom is off tonight. We begin as a Spokane neighbor jumped into action last night and saved a five-year-old boy from being kidnapped from his own front yard. Police arrested that suspect that night and he appeared in court today. Now, according to court documents, the boy walked over to his neighbor's house to play with friends. They asked him to come back later, and as he was walking back to his house next door, that's when a man he didn't know approached him. The neighbor apparently saw that man talking to the boy and heard him say, come here. When the boy tried to walk away, documents show the suspect reached out and picked the boy up before walking away. He made it almost to the end of the block when the boy's neighbor chased after him. Our own Krem 2's Amanda Rowley talked to that mother today. She says she's just grateful her neighbor was there to save her little boy. I'm just so grateful of Victoria. Like, if Victoria wouldn't have been there, I don't know, like, he probably would have taken him. Well, laying in bed last night, I texted her one more time, like, thank you so much, you know? Like, what if she wouldn't have been there? <laughs> Nobody would have realized. Now, Spokane police did arrest the man Felix Booth for second degree attempted kidnapping in his court appearance this afternoon. The judge set his bond at a quarter million dollars. You can join us tonight on Creme 2 News at 5 to hear the neighbor's account of exactly what happened that night. And our other top story here in the four o'clock hour, the ongoing spike of coronavirus cases in our community. We've been showing you a lot of data related to the surge in COVID cases as a result of this Delta variant. Case numbers are up. Hospitalizations are setting records and deaths are always concerning. But what about vaccines? Are we also seeing a surge in people who are getting that shot? Creme 2's Casey Decker is joining us now with a new look at those latest numbers. Casey. Yeah, Whitney, we were wondering if the scary numbers we're seeing regarding this more contagious, more dangerous variant might be motivating more people to go and get vaccinated. So let's go ahead and take a look now. Let's start with some data for Spokane County. This is from the Washington State Department of Health. And actually, we're looking right now, I believe, at the Idaho numbers. Uh, so sorry, we're, let's take a look at Idaho first. <laughs> this is the state of Idaho, uh, their vaccine uh, doses over time. And you can see right when everyone started becoming eligible, of course, is when most of the doses were handed out and then and after that, it kind of just went down and plateaued out and there were almost no doses being given out very regularly in Idaho in the month of June and July. But then we can see here we are starting to see a bit of an uptake, uh, a bit of an uptick in the number of vaccine doses given out in the state of Idaho. And we could probably guess that that has something to do with what we were just talking about with these scary numbers. People are being reminded every single day they need to go out and get that vaccine in order to protect themselves from this more dangerous virus. Now, you might also be wondering what effect full FDA approval of the Pfizer shot might have had on rates, and it's really probably soon to too soon to tell uh, the Pfizer shot was fully approved on August 23rd. And as we just saw in that graph there, it's still we're just still starting to get some of that data from the last couple of weeks. So too early to tell yet. And we saw that the spike or the increase happened a little while before that as well. And now we're actually taking a look at that Spokane County data. And you can see it's a similar story here where we just had a huge increase uh, in vaccines when it was first available. Uh, the continued being pretty popular through May and then in the summer it just you know kind of leveled off there not as many people getting the shot uh, but now we are starting to see a little bit of growth in terms of number of people getting vaccinated in Spokane County every day it's rising a little bit and that's coinciding again with that Delta variant becoming worse hospitalizations going up more people are just starting to say you know I don't want to risk it I'm going to go get my shot and so that might be some positive news here one of the few bits of positive news we've been able to share with you about this virus over the last couple weeks. Whitney. All right, Casey, thank you very much. Good to look at the numbers. We want to turn now to the nation's COVID crisis as we talk about it on a U.S. perspective and the growing number of children who are getting sick. So kids have made up about 15% of documented COVID cases in the U.S. This month, though, that percentage has now jumped to more than 22%. Last week, more than 200,000 new pediatric cases were reported across the country, and that's a more than five-fold increase over the past month. All of this coming amid this ongoing fight over schools and mask mandates. So we'll certainly keep you posted on those numbers, both on the nationwide perspective and here locally. In the meantime, at, back here at home, it certainly is a beautiful Friday afternoon. It looks like it's going to morph into a beautiful Friday evening and a great weekend. We want to turn things over now to Michelle Boston for Tom Sherry tonight. Hi, Michelle. 
Hi, so much going on this weekend. It sounds like uh, first weekend of high school football. So if you're making plans to head out there this evening, don't have to worry about bundling up for that first game. We have some warm weather out there and temperatures will continue to warm over the holiday weekend. Here's a look at the short term forecast. Though, if you're going to be out this evening, uh, we do expect an increase in clouds tonight. That'll actually keep our overnight temperatures a little bit milder. So um, as you head out the door at 6 p.m., temperatures are still going to be near 80 degrees and falling to the lower 70s by 8 o'clock. So it does look like it's going to be a beautiful evening. Very light winds out there as well. Currently 78 in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, upper 70s in Deer Park and Davenport are in Sandpoint and temperatures have warmed back up into the 80s across central Washington from Omak down through Moses Lake in the lower 80s right now in Lewiston. Satellite radar shows uh, clear skies out there right now, but we do see some clouds on the approach from the west. We don't expect any rain out of those clouds, but we will have mostly cloudy skies overnight and then sunshine returning just in time for Saturday and Sunday. High temperatures in the lower 80s. Labor Day looking fabulous. We're looking for partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies and highs in the mid 80s. All right, looks beautiful. Thank you very much, Michelle. Well, some of the largest mega fires across the Northwest have been happening in Washington and Oregon, and one thing they have in common is they exploded because of strong winds from the east, sometimes compared to the Santa Ana winds in Southern California. Our sister station in Seattle talked with uh, several people involved in a study of those winds aimed at helping firefighters now determine our risks all across the state. For the Northwest, September was a month from hell. In Bonnie Lake, Washington, the Sumner Grade Fire burned two homes and threatened hundreds of others in Pierce County. In Oregon, a million acres went up in a string of fires that would eventually involve the Portland metro area. Homes burned, people were killed. These just recent examples. The 1902 Yakult burn in southwest Washington extended into Oregon and stood as Washington's largest wildfire for over a century. In 1933, the Tillamook burn became a fast-moving nightmare. These fires all had a particular key ingredient in common. They were driven by hot, dry winds coming from the east. The 2020 fires, especially the ones in western Oregon last year, were so consistent with everything we know about those historical fires, the 1902 Yakult burn, the 1933 Tillamook burn. Those, the Tillamook burn burned 200,000 acres in a 24-hour period, driven by east wind, and the Yakult burn traveled 30 miles in 36 hours. Dan Donato and Josh Halofsky are fire research scientists with the Washington Department of Natural Resources. They are part of a study of those east winds. The Washington-Oregon state line is a political boundary. The winds could care less. The 2020 fires are consistent with historical fires, and it turns out they burned in locations that also burned in the 1900s and all the way back to the 1850s. So none of the events of 2020 are necessarily surprising from a historical perspective. Uh, with all that said, though, we also know that 2020 was anomalously dry. Fires on the west side of the Cascades are just a different animal than the ones we're more accustomed to on the east side. In some ways, it's not even a climate change question because it's the things we're talking about were in the past and that's just part of how this landscape works. I first met these scientists in 2019 on the site of the 52,000 acre Norse Peak Fire, being used in multiple ways to study the way west side fires work. That fire started on the east slope of the Cascades and was blown over into western Washington. The big fires that shape the landscape here in western Washington are a little bit like earthquakes. This is just another one that may not be on people's radar as much here on the west side. The fires tend to be rare, but they tend to be large. And so that's what, you know, keeps some people, you know, concerned. Nick Bond is Washington State's climatologist who is also involved in the east wind study. This is not necessarily that there's going to be more of these east winds, but when they come along, this is what the landscape is going to look like. And that, um, you know, there's the potential, uh, that much greater potential for extreme fires. Even if the number of east wind events stays the same, there is more opportunity for those east winds to cause damage because there are simply more fires on the western Washington landscape. In many ways, this is a numbers game. The latest census finds there are close to a million more people living in Washington than a decade ago. Since humans caused most wildfires, we're also seeing a record number of fire starts in 2021, 
a third of them on the west side, just waiting for an east wind. Certainly a good reminder, we all need to be doing our own part just to make sure that we're not letting those fires get started in the first place. All right, stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We're back after a quick break.